scopes and holes. So let's talk about a uh, domain. And again, guys, this is just a review really quick. Remember we talked about the implied domain, x plus 1. Is there any number I can't plug in for x and get an output and get a y or f of x value for? Is there any number I can't plug in for x? No, the domain's all real numbers, right? It's good. No problem with it, right? But all I got to do is now put it in the denominator, and I realize I can have an issue, right? Because the denominator can't be 0. I can't divide by 0. Is that OK? I can't divide by 0. So now the domain is all real numbers except negative 1. You guys can do this in your head, but if you have a more difficult problem, remember we just set our denominator equal to 0 and solved. x equals negative 1. So it's all real numbers except for negative 1. So everything to the left, everything to the right, just not negative 1. Because negative 1 makes the denominator 0, and you can't divide by 0. So to write my domain in set notation, be negative infinity to negative 1, union negative 1 to infinity. All right? And then we play around with it again. We say, all right, well, what about g of x equals square root of x plus 1? And then you say, oh, well, what about negative 1 here? Negative 1 makes it 0, but that's OK. You can take the square root of 0. Is there a reason why do you, you just want to take the test? I mean, we're reviewing, so it would be good to pay attention to the review. Otherwise, I mean, I have the test if you want to just take it. So you guys want to turn your desks? Probably easier. Jen, lunch? Wow, she's must have been really good lunch. Must have had. So anyways, what we look at in here is we have the square root of x plus 1. Can we take the square root of 0? Yes. yes. Can we take the square root of negative 1? Yes. yes, in the complex number system. But the domain is the set of real numbers we're talking about, right? I say all real numbers. We're only concerned about the, real, the set of real numbers. So we realize the values that make this my radicand negative are not going to be within my domain of real numbers, correct? So then I got to figure out, well, what numbers then make the radicand under the expression under the radical negative? And we look at this and we say, well, that's going to be all the numbers that are, um, uh, that are going to be greater than negative 1. Because you look at negative 2, that makes the denominator 0. So all I told you guys to do here, no matter how complicated your expression was, was just set your radicand greater than or equal to 0. So then you'd say x is greater than or equal to negative 1. And then if you were to draw that on a number line, you'd say here's negative 1. All numbers that are greater than negative 1 are to the right. And it would look like this. Oh, I'm sorry. However, is negative 1, can we have negative 1? Yeah, we talked about that, right? So that's included. So the domain in this case is negative 1 to infinity. OK? Now, let's go ahead and have some fun, or let's change up. So that's the basics. If you know the basics, you should be able to hopefully figure out or at least eliminate some answer choices. Yes? Yep, I'll, do, I'll be getting to that. Um, <clears throat> so now let's kind of look at some different ways you guys could see these functions. And I'm going to remember, um, <clears throat> let's look at. Now let's kind of bring everything together. So now, remember guys, you could have radicals in the numerator. You could have radicals in the denominator. You have multiple, multiple, multiple different things you could have. All right. I'm just going to do one example here like this where it is in the denominator. And actually, I'll do another one. Let's do this. g of x. Let's change this into an x plus 1 over x plus 1 times x. OK, so let's do two examples. Why not, right? We have enough time in this class. So in this example, do you guys see we have a restriction on our domain? Yeah, we have two restrictions now, right? We know that x cannot equal 0, because that would make the whole denominator equal to 0. 
and we know that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 1, right? Now, the interesting thing is these x's divide out, right? Because this is separated by multiplication. Don't do this. Maybe that's what I should do. I'll do it this way. I'll talk about that later in a second. Now let's do this. Sorry. <clears throat> OK. So these x's divide out. Now again, guys, remember, this is what we learned again in rational functions. When x's divide out, that is just a whole, 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 right? But again, is it still an undefined value in our domain? Yes. So just because it's a whole doesn't affect our domain. It's still undefined value in our domain. So we know that x cannot equal 0. And then here, x has to be greater than or equal to negative 1. But what happens when it's negative 1? What happens when it's negative 1? It's 0. And then that makes the denominator 0, right? So when, when, remember, when you have a radical in the, in the denominator, you just set that radicand greater than 0, not equal to, because we don't want it to be equal to. So let's go and look at this number line. We can't have 0, ow. We can't have 0. That is undefined. And then we have all values that are greater than negative 1, but not equal to negative 1. So our domain would look like that. So if I needed to write the domain for that, I would write it as negative 1 to 0, union 0 to infinity. Now let's look at this one. This is actually a product. I'm sorry, I changed the number multiple times. But this one gets students all the time. They see an x in the numerator and they say, oh, they divide out. Right? But no, guys. They only divide out when you have them separated by multiple. Now you could say like this is separated times 1, right? These x's are multiplied by, they're, they're multiplied with another expression by multiplication. They're separated by multiplication. So you can apply the division property. As you look over here, this x, you could say, is separated by 1 with multiplication. But this x is not separated by 1 with multiplication. It's separated by addition. So you can't divide them out. OK? So no, no. Only when you have terms separated by multiplication or division. So here, I just have x under the radical. So therefore, x has to be greater than 0. And x cannot equal negative 1. Now, the cool thing is when we look at the number line here, x cannot equal negative 1, and x has to be greater than 0. So does it really matter that x cannot equal negative 1? Do we really care? No, because our domain is only going to be for values that are greater than 0, which would be from 0 to infinity. Cool, yes, questions? You guys want to do jumping jacks? Star jumps? Star jumps? Star jumps? No. You guys never done star jumps? <laughs>